Sometimes I find myself stressing about YouTuber questions like, what kind of videos should I make? Should I have a regular schedule of one video a week like John Green says I should? How do I get more viewers? Should I be making my videos more actually educational? Do I need more snakes? How do I do this right? Sometimes I feel the pressure of all those eyes watching me. That's when I need to take a step back and open up They Became What They Beheld by Ted Carpenter to the foreword and reread the wisest words I know. I recently came across the following rules of communication posted in a school of journalism. 1. Know your audience and address yourself directly to it. 2. Know what you want to say and say it clearly and fully. 3. Reach the maximum audience by utilizing existing channels. Whatever senses may have made in a world of print, it makes no sense today. In fact, the reverse of each rule applies. If you address yourself to an audience, you accept at the outset the basic premises that unite the audience. You put on the audience, repeating cliches familiar to it. But artists don't address themselves to audiences. They create audiences. The artist talks to himself out loud. If what he has to say is significant, others hear and are affected. And I'm reminded of why I do this. Artists create audiences. I don't make videos for mass consumption. I make them for myself, to amuse myself, or because I have a cool concept that I want to make real. Carpenter meant it metaphorically, but I'm literally talking to myself. I am the only example of a human I have access to, the only one whose thoughts I can hear. So if I can make a video I like, at least it appeals to someone. If I were making videos for imaginary people whose thoughts I'm imagining, they'd probably be terrible. Let's read on. The trouble with knowing what to say and saying it clearly and fully is that clear speaking is generally obsolete thinking. Clear statement is like an art object. It is the afterlife of the process which called it into being. The process itself is the significant step and, especially at the beginning, is often incomplete and uncertain. The problem with full statement is that it doesn't involve. It leaves no room for participation. It's addressed to consumer, not co-producer. What a perfect description of what is wrong with education. There's a reason people prefer my videos, which ramble through my thought process, or Sal's Khan Academy videos, which he makes in real time, to the stale, polished information, let's memorize equations, stuff that education publishers still insist on producing as if, if they just put all the facts in the perfect order and add more splashy graphics that pretend what you're learning is good for sports or shopping, then surely it will suddenly be extremely successful. Up to a certain point, maybe you can know a little kid better than she knows herself, but these days people are savvy enough that it doesn't take them long to realize that they are being used as consumers. Utilizing existing channels can wipe out a statement. There is a widely accepted misconception that media merely serve as neutral packages for the dissemination of raw facts. Photographers once thought that by getting their photographs published in life, they would thereby reach large audiences. Gradually, they discovered that the only message that came through was Life magazine itself, and that their pictures had become but bits and pieces of that message. The same thing occurs on TV guest shows. Guests accept invitations to appear on programs in the hopes that their message will reach new and wider audiences, but even when they are treated in a friendly manner, they generally come away with a sense of failure. Somehow, the message transmitted is far removed from the message intended. And so YouTube comes on the scene. The young today shun the hardware of the past. Marx thought the big question was, who owns the presses? Software makes hardware obsolete, an encumbrance, creating a false sense of power and security. The young package their messages in media that fit their messages. That is, they create new media to fit their messages. In so doing, they create their own audiences. Some of these audiences may be very small at the beginning. The point was that they would reach the right people in the right way with the right message. This was written in 1970. Ted Carpenter didn't know there would be an internet or a YouTube, but he knew this. Reaching a wider audience is not worth sacrificing your content. Better your message be heard clearly by a small audience than warped in favor of a large one. I would rather have one person know me well than a billion know me poorly. I didn't expect you to want to watch my videos. I thought maybe some of the math professor types in the math art community would like my stuff and that's it. But I'm glad you are watching because it turns out y'all are super cool. I know this because I've met a lot of you at events like VidCon, where you went from imaginary the audience to actual individual people. And it turns out I like you. I do want to make you happy. Nothing makes me angrier than when people want to use me in order to use you through advertising or promoting their pet projects or friends or whatever. But if I try to do things for you, it will destroy the very thing I'm doing. I'd be sacrificing my message for the sake of audience. Edmund Snow Carpenter doesn't have a large audience. He's dead. This book is long out of print and not so easy to find, which is why I'm showing so much of it to you. This unconventional book didn't make him famous, but his message came through. 
I don't know to what extent he's captured the difference between art and entertainment, or where education fits in, but it's enough to get me thinking. Someday YouTube probably will grow to the point that the medium will be the message. Already people are starting to feel that they have to do things a certain youtube way in order to get their message out. People are obsessed with subscriber counts, they think they need to use flashy titles and thumbnails and sex appeal, that they need to become partners and join networks and solicit comments and subscriptions. There are accepted formats. If you have a message to share, please remember, you don't need those things. Maybe more people will hear you, but what you actually want to say could be lost. We'll take that format, which seems to work, and repeat those cliches until none of us are saying anything at all, and then YouTube will go the way of television. Too much medium, not enough message.